What's going on, mate? This is Riley Knight from the podcast half Assed History here to have a bit of a chat with you about the heroes featured in Hidden Cup 5. All the heroes the players are using to hide their true identities are real-life people from history featured as units in various Age of Empires campaigns. And while T90 is an avid history lover, his knowledge and memory of history would uh, pretty firmly make him a historical low elo legend, I think it's fair to say. So he invited me along to tell you a thing or two about these heroes we're watching square off against one another. Let's get to know one of them a little bit better. Coming to power as the Byzantine Emperor in 1081, Alexius I Komnenos inherited a realm in the midst of collapse. Ten years previous, the Byzantines had suffered a disastrous loss at the Battle of Manzikert, crippling their power and their influence in the east of the realm and allowing the Turks to continue their westward expansion into Anatolia, or essentially modern day Turkey. In addition, Norman expansion into the Balkans was threatening the Byzantine Empire to the west, and with four different emperors ruling between 1067 and 1081, the Byzantines were not in good shape. So it's lucky for them that Alexios came along, usurped the throne from Nicophorus III Botanaetes, and steadied the ship, beginning a period of Byzantine history known as the Komnemnian Restoration. His first job was to fight off those making incursions into Byzantine lands, such as Robert Guiscard, another Hidden Cup 5 competitor, but he also had internal threats to deal with, opportunistic rebels and political malcontents. But as any good Byzantine would, he defended himself from all of these threats, internal and external, building up his forces behind extra HP walls, just like we all did when playing the game for the first time as kids, and he also put the formidable Byzantine navy to use, raiding Turkish settlements along the coasts of the Black Sea. How you like all those faster firing fast fires, huh? But Alexius also played the diplomatic game as well, making some clever alliances to aid him in fighting off his foes. For instance, with the Cumans to the north, which was terrific because now his, um, oh wait, his palisade walls are completely impregnable. Wow, great. Thanks for the team bonus, Cumans. Why don't you click human mercenaries as well and send me a few free tiny low damage paper mache kipchaks while you're at it. But no more important were his attempts to normalise relations with the papacy in Rome. Constantinople and Rome weren't exactly on the best of terms at the time, but neither of them wanted hordes of Turks overrunning Christendom. Plus, always useful to have access to condottieri. Now there's a team bonus, take note humans. In 1091, Alexius sent ambassadors to Pope Urban II to request direct support in his campaigns against the Turks to the east, and the Pope obliged. This was the beginning of the First Crusade, and the Pope made it about more than just Anatolia and the Turks. Pope Urban wanted to capture the holy city of Jerusalem for Christendom as well. Waves and waves of crusading warriors made their way east, and while a lot of them were, you know, pretty much completely destroyed by the Turks, later Crusaders were able to drive the Turks back and reclaim much of Anatolia for the Byzantines. And from there, realising the time had come to quit while he was ahead, Alexios thanked the Crusaders, refused to help them any further as they continued on into the Holy Land, and instead focused on the one thing the Byzantines are best at. No, not rushing him for a huge power spike, no, he focused on defence. Alexius didn't overextend into the Holy Land. Instead, he consolidated the gains he made against the Turks with the help of the Crusaders. And this is representative of his determination to pull the Byzantines back from the crisis and collapse they faced at the beginning of his realm. And I'll tell you this, it worked. Alexios is considered to have saved the empire from ruin and his efforts to stabilize things saw the Byzantines continue to prosper for centuries until of course, 1453 and the fall of Constantinople, but hey, that's nobody's business but the Turks. But what will the fate of Alexius Komnenos be in Hidden Cup 5? Will he once again be able to weather the storm, rely on his solid defences and see himself through bitter conflict with powerful foes? Or will he collapse this time, unable to steady the ship as he did a thousand years ago? We'll find out as Hidden Cup 5 continues.